Hey everybody, Scal Crafty here again. It's Midweek Wednesday, but a very special Wednesday. It's the day before Thanksgiving, a special holiday here in the States where we stuff ourselves at the uh, dinner table in thanks for everything that we have and we celebrate with family, friends and family. It's always a good time. A uh, couple things to talk about today. We're going to, it's going to be a short one. We're just going to do a show and tell, but uh, we also have something we want to cover first up. So let's get started right away okay first up uh, i want to talk about this real quick i ordered this product because i want to experiment with it i uh, got a tack in my tire while i thought i was going to have to use noodles i didn't but um this is the stuff that's supposed to be real good if you're uh, going to lubricate those noodles to put them in this is a vulcanizing cement now vulcanization for rubber involves heat and sulfur it's a, it's a big process but it bonds the molecules together and it makes for a permanent seal this is supposed to mimic that at uh, this chemical, and it's supposed to be good. Um, the thing is that uh, a good friend of the show, Brian Burke, said, hey, listen, I see it says for commercial use only. What's that about? And I, I had to laugh about that. I said, you know, years ago, they used to put stuff like that on containers to entice people like me thinking that it was a professional product that, you know, oh, commercial use. Oh, that's better than regular use. So. But I don't know, there might be some legal implications on there. So I'm going to ask my buddy Dan Semmel, who's a big-time lawyer in Manhattan. And uh, Dan would know whether or not this has any uh, legal implications over here when you put that for commercial use only or something. So I'm going to ask him, and I'll get back to you and let you know on that. So very interesting. And we're going to experiment with this project, uh, product and see how it works and you know what it could do for us. Now, if you remember last week when I found that uh, Kennedy 520 toolbox, in one of the drawers of the toolbox was this uh, bottle slash can opener, sometimes referred to as a church key. It was a little bit rusted. I cleaned it up. And, uh, and I, you know, I had to talk about this because this is probably one of the first tools that I've ever used in my life. This was, you know, a big part of growing up when I was younger. And uh, I said, maybe you enjoy seeing a, my, a bit of my collection. You know, when I say collection, I'm not talking about something like this. But I'm talking about, uh, I, I started collecting these when I was actually in uh, Scouts. I was, uh, we used to make these stoves, these uh, hobo stoves, they were called. And that's where you take a, a large tin can and you, you make holes around it. So I, I was a leader at the time and I had to, each one of the, the patrols needed to have one of these uh, can openers. So I went out and I bought about six of them, brand new, Echo, and they weren't tempered. The things bent on, and, and I was so disappointed. I even wrote to Echo, I was, so, I was totally upset. However, then I said, you know what? I'm gonna stop, by. I just started buying older ones. And that led into another thing. So uh, let me tell you a little bit about the history and, and what these are about and why these are so interesting. Now, in the very early days, food and uh, other preserves would come in glass vessels or jars, things like that, and for since the 1800s. But it wasn't until about 1935 that a, a company, I think in Virginia, started putting beer or liquids in, t in cans. And um, so they started putting the liquids in cans. And... And when they did, they, it was sealed just like this, top and bottom, and you needed a way to get the liquid out. So they would often come with a, uh, a opener, okay? Now, there were different types of openers when they first came out. This is a double-ended opener, so you could do bottles on one end, or you could do a can puncture on the other side, okay, which is this one here. And it was pretty ingenious how it would work because there's a lip around the can here and this would fit under the lip like that. And when you lift it up, it would make a triangle hole. Now for some of you old timers out there, this was something, you know, we did, but it, it had a short lifespan. It only went from about 1935 when they came out with this type of can for beverages. And then by 1975, we already went to, we started doing the pull tops or pull tabs. And these didn't last that long because from there, we went to what's commonly known as the pop top, okay? So um, self-opening cans, they're called. But uh, today, the only beverage cans you really get that still have that you would need a opener or a can piercer 
are like condensed milk and other things like that, sometimes pineapple juice that still don't have those pop top can openers. And I remember as a kid, because this was a tool that, you know, uh, my uncles, my grandfather, you know, everybody, you know, they would have a can of beer or whatever and they would pop it open. And I always, I always wanted to use it. It was something like a tool. They were, they were flaunting it in front of my face. And, and I would pick us up and look at it and I'd say, wow, this is an amazing tool. And I remember my uncle one time showing me because we had soda that would come in these type cans too. And usually the cheaper brands. But uh, you would get soda and you would need a, a key. And, and like I said, they called these uh, church keys. Not in my family. We never called them. Some people did. And the reason is because this type of key, the back of this key, of this bottle opener, resembled the back of a church key. But there's a, a whole lot of reasons why they said they called it that. But we never called it that in my house. So when you wanted to open the can, I remember there were different ways to do it. My uncle showed me. And this was the important part. Now, the first one you would open, you would take it, you would seat the tool against the can, and you would lift up on your wrist, which would cause a puncture of the can. You would go all the way down like this, so it was flat against the bottom. Okay, so now there's your first triangle, okay? Now, when you, you here was the important thing. You could drink it like this, but it would chug, which means that as you were trying to drink it, the air would try and force its way back into the same hole. So you had to put a secondary hole on the other side called a vent hole. Now, in my family, amateurs would do the same thing as this. They would make a full thing, but to really do it, you would just put a smaller, okay? So that's only half one. So you knew which side was vented and which side was to drink from. But then every once in a while, I would put a secondary hole up here, a second, so that I would know that's my can. So I had like a double vent. It was funny, this is something that you don't think about now, but this was this was an enjoy. Just the feeling of popping that can was a very enjoyable uh, procedure back in the day. And now these uh, can openers or can piercers and bottle openers used to come with advertisements. Now the one thing that a lot of people don't realize that when we went from this type of can that you would drink from, now once you vented the top, this would pour out just beautifully. It would make a nice stream as it poured out. You never got that with these pop uh, top cans or pull tab cans because there's no vent. So what happens is every time you drink, now this one here had a longer opening so that the top would suck air. This one here has a wider opening, but it's not the same. It still guzz, it, it gurgles when you drink. It's not the same. It, uh, it's not as enjoyable. The other thing is when you pop this can in or you pull that tab out, there's always this sharp edge, it's a sharp edge around the edge here. So as you're putting this against your mouth, you're always feeling that sharp edge. It's not really an enjoyable uh, operation. Whereas here, because you pressed it down, this was smooth over here. When your lips touched this or whatever, you never got cut from here because it was pressed in, it was punctured in. It was an ingenious design. Now let's talk quickly about the different types of uh, can, bottle openers, things like that, that they had that they used to give away or you had to purchase, but these were around by the millions and then all of a sudden like that, they were gone. Okay, first off we have our standard bottle openers and this is probably where the analogy to church key came from because of the back of these look something like a back of a church key. But um, these here were very popular because remember bottles were around long before any of the cans. So they didn't, they just were standard bottle openers, which was a cork press type bottle cap and they were very useful. They came in all different styles, but this was the, usually the advertising ones would come like this and you could see it had different advertisements on here. They were giveaways, things like that. They had different shapes, different sizes. Everybody had their the favorite. type of strictly bottle openers with the open frame type like this. There were people that just collect these. And you could see here, they had different advertisements on here. As you can see this one here, it says, have a Coke, Coca-Cola. This one here is fresh up with seven up so they had not just for soda but you know beer and whatnot and so these were the open frame type there were a bunch of these types some companies tried to distinguish themselves by making just a different type of this is a bottle opener as you could see here different type from true blue beer and ale you know those were kind of different and would separate themselves this one here a modern extruded aluminum type 
of uh, bottle opener you use a lot of these would hang on keychains and stuff they make these today that's the most popular giveaways now i guess my favorite and I'm, i don't consider myself a collector is this type of uh, combination this is the one i grew up with this is the one that was always hanging by the steam pipe in my uh, grandmother's house and my house was always that as combination can piercer and bottle opener and there were so many different types and there were so many great advertisements on there when you think about it you know uh the way they were the fonts the different fonts they had on here um just the way they were made some of them were more heavy duty than others some of them were had a different backing like this one here you see that bottle opener is not really something i think you would enjoy using as much as the regular ones but this one here again they called them can tappers or whatever here is something that uh i would get when i would buy them in a lot and i never had these but these are really cool this is something i think i would have liked this is a combination bottle opener on one side can tapper on the other uh you know flip it around and it had a little red i don't know what you would call this but i just think that's cool i you know that a little red air and again here this is glenside distributing and this one here is uh uh newmanstown athletic association uh, this is things seasons greetings they would give things like this out around this time of year you know christmas then you had the ones that a lot of times you would buy at supermarkets they had this one here is a uh, a, a cork screw combination bottle opener and can tapper these are very popular and they worked very well um and like i said these are my favorite however of these type of combination and look at this one here it's copper plated, right? Copper plated Walden. That one's just a standard can tapper. Uh, some of these were, you know, just non-engraved. Be good for the engraver upstairs. Make a scout crafter one. Um, all different type. They are cool. And and some of them are a little bit more, some of them were downright cheesy when they tried to add some kind of handle on here but a lot of times they were magnetic or whatever so you could you wouldn't lose them you could stick them on the refrigerator these were big i guess in the 70s or something you know, it's anything to kind of differentiate you from the other ones but most of these were giveaways because they were advertised some of the more collectible type are these folding type combinations you could see here this one here is a as an advertising one but it's got the can popper some of them had a bushing a little bushing in between some of them didn't like this one here and uh this one here was mod by echo but you could see it would open up to a regular one i don't know how durable these were because they did fold but i guess if you held it like this and pierced it it would work but there's your bottle opener, the folding ones. They're unusual. You don't see these too now, often. Now, growing up, the one that we always had in our drawer in the kitchen was this one here. It's called a Tap Boy. I see Vaughn's makes it, and it had a bottle opener. This one here, the bottle, uh, the cork screw snapped off somehow. But this thing really worked good. The Tap Boys. They, uh, I know it looks gimmicky with that little plastic in here, but they, they were just made so well, and they had just the right angle to them. So. When you came up to the can, it just did a beautiful job in popping that open. You know, really nice. If you want to get a new one, this is the one to get. And last up, if you're thinking about getting into collecting uh, memorabilia like this, I would say stay away from anything that's damaged, stained, or rusted in this type of uh, metallic uh, objects. Because these don't clean up like uh, like our tools do. You know, you can put them on the wire brush. You can put them in the vapor brush. This is the best you'll get. They always stay stained. You'll never get those stains out of there. So they're kind of, they don't present very well. So if you're going to... This is maybe collectors might be looking for certain types to fill their collection. So maybe they'll buy them. But, you know, if you're going to pick these up, pick them up in lots that are in really good shape. Do not waste your time on especially broken ones or something because they have no value other than the fact that, you know, that's the way they so are. So in closing, I was wondering, do any of you have any memories of using your uh, can tappers or bottle openers? Because in today's day and age with screw tops and uh pop tops it's just not the same not the same as it was back in the day anyway i hope you have a great holiday thanks so much for tuning in take care now bye bye